name's Matthew Harbin. I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager for ASEAN in India, looking after all of our products from technologies like vSphere, uh, end-use computing, to our developer technologies such as Cloud. Cloud Foundry is a, a project that came out of VMware to be able to go ahead and help developers to rapidly go ahead and build applications in this age of applications being deployed to the cloud. And what we found was that there's so many different disparate frameworks out there, disparate platforms, it became very, very complex for the average developer. So Cloud Foundry, what it's done is we've built a platform which is essentially, as we call, platform as a service. And that contains a whole range of popular developer frameworks, so things like Ruby on Rails, Grails, .NET, uh, and then a whole range of application services which developers can use. And the purpose for that is that developers have access to this platform they can go ahead and build applications consuming those services, consuming those frameworks, and then deploy to a variety of different clouds and, and do it in a fast way. Okay, um, so basically, we like to, we're proud of the fact that uh, Cloud Foundry is the first open source platform as a service. So basically, the entire code base for, for Cloud Foundry is available for free for developers to go ahead and download. They're able to go ahead and make changes. They're able to go ahead and implement in their own systems. So we've been very, very vocal about providing a platform which is open for people to go ahead and you know, make changes to and be able to go ahead and actually add features and things like that. Um, we've focused a lot on those developer frameworks. Like I said, we're not actually going ahead and saying to developers, okay, you must use this particular language or you must use this particular services. We support a whole range of different things. As I said, some are different frameworks, but if you take example, some of the different databases, you know, MySQL, Man uh, MongoDB, things like that. There's a whole range of different framework services we're putting into the actual platform itself. So it gives developers that choice. We don't want to lock them in. We want to enable them to have choice to get the best possible applications they can. I would sort of say we actually support .NET very, very well. If you write a .NET application today uh, in your, in your, you know, on your workstation, you can go ahead and deploy to Cloud Foundry straight away. It's interesting. People sort of ask this question, you know, we're providing the source code. You know, could people go ahead and take Cloud Foundry, make it their own version and make money off it? I think that's great, right? The whole purpose of Cloud Foundry is to be able to go ahead and develop this open platform which people can go ahead and adopt and deploy in their own types of systems. Um, and the reason why it's good is we can actually go ahead and promote application portability. So a lot of our partners that we actually work with today are actually supporting Cloud Foundry on top of their own systems. So for example, if uh, you build an application on VMware's Cloud Foundry, you can go ahead and pick up that application and without a rewrite, deploy it to another partner's system who also supports Cloud Foundry. So for us, the more people who actually take the source code of Cloud Foundry and implement it as part of their hosting platform will ultimately actually benefit the customers at the end of the day. There's a couple of them. Off the top of my head, one of the ones which we were talking about last night was uh, Amazon Web Services. So Amazon Web Services in conjunction with AppFrog actually provides support for Cloud Foundry. So if you had an application on Cloud Foundry that was hosted by VMware, you could instantly go ahead and pick that up and then deploy it onto Amazon Web Services. Uh, the, the, the whole concept about cloud inside an organization at the end of the day is, is an entire solution stack, right? So it's not just about the developer experience, it's also about the infrastructure you provide. So the point of Cloud Foundry means that we can go ahead and take that uh, platform and bring it into an internal organization and host it internally. So an organization could have their own developer department. They can go ahead and build their own applications and actually provision those applications within their own firewall. So they actually have that same sort of developer experience. Um, as part of a whole private cloud, it's one piece, but it certainly makes the development of internal applications a lot simpler than having to work out, okay, do I want to go ahead and use this particular framework or not? Um, if I extrapolate a little bit, what's really interesting right now in the industry is a lot of customers are talking about this, this concept called outsourcing 3.0, right? And it's also known as cloud bursting, right? And essentially the, the point around cloud bursting is that sometimes organizations have demands on their applications that will be more than the infrastructure can possibly support. Now, as we start moving into public cloud, there's this sort of resource that people can go ahead and consume on demand. So for example, a company has an application which they know will start becoming you know, very resource intensive for a month. They certainly don't want to go ahead and buy a whole heap of additional services just to go ahead and host for that month because when that month is up, what do they do with the service? In the situation, if a customer actually develops on Cloud Foundry and they're implementing it on their own private cloud, they could have that application and if they needed to, they could move it off their internal networks 
and put it onto a public cloud service and have it hosted there during that month of real uh, increased activity and then bring it back again. So you know this whole platform gives you that ability for the application mobility without the code changes. The big thing we've been focusing on, I mean, we, we don't want to sort of go ahead and just put something up there and say, okay, now go ahead and try it, right? And, and expect customers to go ahead and pay, right? We, we're really focused on delivering a quality product. And so, you know, we've been working on Cloud Foundry for, as you say, the last year. Um, and we've had great sort of support. We've had people, I think around 75,000 people actually go ahead and download Cloud Foundry. We've got people who are going ahead and building applications on it right now. Um, people are asking us, when can I start paying for the service? So our focus right now is to make sure that that service is working really, really well, right? So we're still going through and making sure we're doing the tweaks and things like that. In fact, this release, as we're sort of talking about a year later, we've probably done what you see from a developer point of view or what the people who will go ahead and consume Cloud Foundry will probably see about 20% of the work. There's actually about 80% of the work is underneath the covers in terms of making sure the engine runs really, really well, making sure the platform is really tweaked for performance. So until we get to that exact point where we really think that's going to be rock solid, mm -hmm. that's when we'll go ahead and make the plans commercially available. Now, that being said, you'll probably see those commercial, commercially available plans coming out towards uh, the later part of this year. Okay. So there's four, four main things that have actually occurred since the, the year, right? And it's, it's fairly, I guess, a little bit so marketing to sort of say, but we look at it in the four mores, right? We've got more code, we've got more partners, we've got more community, and we've got more cloud, right? So the first one, we'll, we'll talk about more cloud, right? So that was, we talked about before about, you know, portability. There are more people now who are actually supporting Cloud Foundry on top of their own cloud provisioning services, as I gave you the example, the Amazon and AppFrog one. We actually have a whole list of partners who are now going ahead and actually allowing people to go ahead and provision their applications on Cloud Foundry on different platforms. So it's not just VMware, right? It's Amazon, it's uh, tier three, a whole range of different customers are going out there providing support for Cloud Foundry. If we talk about more partners, a lot of partners now are actually really going out there and supporting Cloud Foundry as deployment options for their tools. So these are people who are building uh, development tools, lifecycle management tools, their ISVs, a whole range of different things, and they're supporting Cloud Foundry as an option to either deploy their applications or to have tools that interact with Cloud Foundry. So we're really excited about the number of partners that are coming on board and supporting Cloud Foundry. Um, we talked about more code, right? So as I said, we've got lots and lots of people now who are going out there and downloading. 75,000 people have downloaded Cloud Foundry. And to help with that, uh, we've established cloudfoundry.org, which is really the hosting area for the open source technology. And then the last thing is on more code. You know, we're actually releasing technologies to be able to go ahead and help with a number of different things. So, uh, so uh, cloudfoundry.org, for example, is now integrating in a source code management system, which is using a whole range of different open source tools to be able to help manage the release cycle. We've also gone ahead and released another code tool called Bosch, which essentially is a tool to help go ahead and do deployments and monitoring of large-scale distributed systems. So those four things are some of the things that you've seen over that long period of time. But again, we are continuing to making sure, because it is an important project to us, we continually go ahead and refine and enhance that technology and make it the best possible platform for application developers. I think, I think in closing, I think if you're a developer, you're looking for a way to go ahead and build applications that will give you the ability to go ahead and take advantage of cloud scale and, and quick ramp up times, looking at fast application development, faster time to market, you know, really take a look at Cloud Foundry, right? It gives you the opportunity to provision your own mini cloud environment on your laptop that will be able to go ahead and be used for the actual large scale cloud as well. I think it's a great way to go ahead and build development applications. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you very much.